Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, Warner Brothers boss David Zaslav says that the studio is overpaid to end the WGA strike. Yeah, you think? What? Yeah, it sounds to me like they just wanted to hurry up and get it done, get it over with. But uh, I think there's going to be some buyer's remorse here. And we're going to talk about how the end of the uh, the strike is the beginning of woes for Hollywood, for a lot of people in Hollywood, because everything is going to be done cheaper with fewer people. Right, which we've been saying since, you know, the WJ thing started. Now, the Zaslav thing, though, it's funny because they all went after Bob Iger, but Zaslav is much more... I mean, he's the one trying to, like, you know, write off entirely finished movies. Yeah, which apparently they have they have uh, Congress looking into that or something. There's They're one like, guy in Congress, yeah. One, one guy in Congress who's a huge Looney Tunes fan decided <laughs> he was... He's a Looney Tunes fan. He might be. He's like, I could just see him, like, like you know... You can just got send the Congress suit. and Looney Tunes, people believe it. But. He's got the suit, he rips it off like Clark Kent style, and he's got like a Bugs Bunny shirt or something. It's like, I'm going to save Coyote versus Acne. I don't know. Some of the people you see, like you said, them in the media at these these congressional things are dressed in Bugs Bunny shirts and jeans anyway. Oh, my God. We were watching, this is like a side tangent, but we are watching uh, like the one UFO or UAP, I guess we're calling them UAPs now, UAP uh, uh, thing on... I forget what it was, some documentary. Anyway, I was surprised at the number of people that were in Congress, around Congress, media people, that were just in like jeans and t-shirts. And I'm like, you know, back in the day, like anytime there was some kind of congressional hearing or uh, testimony or whatever, you'd, you'd put on a clean shirt and you'd put on a, a, a jacket at least, and you'd look presentable, you know, like you do in the movies. And these people are just like, now nah, we're just like hanging out. Like it's, you know, we're working at you know, but retail or something. I'm like, what the frick? Uh, anyway, we're going to talk about all this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you get woohoo if you do. Woohoo. Uh, go out to shopclownfish.com and uh, please secure a copy of Shadowbinders Volume 3. Only hardcover. five days left, guys, and then he'll stop talking about it. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> Until we go on to the next thing. And then no, start talking we'll about that. We'll give you a break for a while. Yeah, we'll give you a break. Uh, yeah, we're trying not to be too pushy this time. We mentioned it during the videos, but I didn't do a little commercial or anything like that. Uh, yeah, so please support this. Uh, volumes 1 and 2. And uh, Volume 3 is the first new Shadowbinders content in many years. And uh, it's going to ship next summer. You're probably going to have nightmares. They're going to be like, oh, my volume three coming next summer because they have to hear it so many times. <laughs> volume three coming next summer in a world where Neon won't shut up about his damn comic books I don't care about. So, yeah, let's talk about the WGA. And if you remember some of the drama around the WGA. Uh, I remember they went and, and harassed people that were waiting in line for Halloween Horror Nights at Universal. Yes, uh, they did. And they also uh, were very angry at Drew Barrymore because she was going to bring her show back, which contractually she had to do. She was allowed to do. She wasn't under that agreement. But meanwhile, Saturday Night Live got to continue. Yes, they did. They had an interim agreement. And the agreement view got to continue. The view never stopped. And they're under the same agreement, I believe, that Drew Barrymore is under. But they targeted Drew Barrymore because she wanted to go back to work. She wanted to put her people back to work, her below-the-line workers back to work. And she said, look, the show's not going to be as good. Same with Bill Maher. He wanted to do the same thing. He's like, look, the show's not going to be as good without, without my staff writers, but we need to put people back to work. And God, they came after her so hard and she had to backpedal. But now she's back and she doesn't have her writers, her WGA writers, who quit on her because they were so disgusted that she would go on with, without them. And uh, she lost her her presentation gig, I guess, at the the Book Awards, and they got LeVar Burton. But her her show hit a 22-week 22, 22 ratings high. So apparently it didn't affect her very much, and people are just moving on. They're stepping over the situation. A 22-week right? ratings high, though, but how long was the show down for? Oh, my gosh. I mean, to be fair, it's like, oh, my gosh, guys, we finally are back, and we haven't been on the air for 20, 23 weeks. But, hey, we have the records high of 22 weeks for our show because we haven't had a show in... You know, uh, well, that could be that could be like, too. I'm that could saying. be too. That could be too. But uh, I mean, she's in third place behind uh, live with Kelly and Mark. I can't keep track of who's on live anymore. And now Kelly got her husband on there, so now it's her, her well, husband. If they get, yeah, because I thought it was Ryan Seacrest. Wasn't it was, it? but they got rid of him for Mark. Okay. All right. So then there's another guy on there too. I forget who that guy was, but yeah, I can't keep track of who. So if she divorces this guy, is she gonna get the new guy on too. Well, she's been with this guy for a long time, so I don't think that's happening. Okay, maybe they'll get their kids on. They'll just have their kids take over. Be like Clownfish TV. We'll just have. Oh, if I, so if I divorce you, you're gonna have another host. Henry. 
Well then, but so oh, so it's gonna be me and Henry, not you. Okay, I get it. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll let the shippers decide. Is it gonna be Geeky and Henry or me and Henry? Um, yeah, and she's behind the Kelly Clarkson show too. I didn't even know Kelly Clarkson had a show. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's had one for a while. Anyway, let's get to the point. Ah, uh, the point is you're like Dave, not going to the point. Dave, I don't get to the point very often. Uh, it's <laughs> I just don't like get to the point very often either. But that's another story. <laughs> sorry. Well, maybe you get to the point with Henry. <laughs> sorry. Is that I what you're kidding. saying? Henry was, would get you to the point a lot quicker? The look I got. I was kidding. It was a joke. But the look <laughs> I was just given was hilarious. You should have seen it. All right. I they all on live. Like, I've watched live, too, and they just talk about stupid stuff. Like, how can you get paid that much money to just sit there and talk about, like, your dog? You know, like, oh, yeah, hey, my dog took a big dump, and we're going to talk about it for, like, 20 minutes while we <laughs> slowly <laughs> sip coffee. What do you feed your dog? Well... <laughs> So this is what he said to the New York Times. He said they're right about almost everything. Um, so so what if we he overpay? He was right about almost everything. Uh, the writers, he said, so what if we overpay? I've never regretted overpaying for great talent or great asset. Right, for good talent and assets. Well, this, yeah. is, this is what we're going to get into. Because, look, we've said this before, okay? Uh, things are absolutely going to change. And, yeah, they did overpay. And, yeah, some people are going to get a better deal. It's going to be the same with the actors, same with the right whatever, directors, they're going to do a lot fewer programs. So yes, they're going to pay more for the people that perform. Well, they're going to be able to pick and choose too. If they do fewer, you're going to have more choices because everybody wants the jobs and now it's going to be performance-based or talent-based. Yeah. So let's um, talk about it because he basically came out and said, yeah, I don't mind overpaying. I don't think you guys are worth that much, but you know, you're good people. So I'll, I'll throw you a bone. I'll overpay. So this is, this is where things are going to get interesting. This came out uh, yesterday from Variety. The end of the strikes is just the beginning for a new era in Hollywood. And they talk about how the content spend is down mm -hmm. or it's going to be down. It's going to be down. They already said that they're going to spend less. And they said that it's contracting already. They said it is important to remember the contraction began before the strikes. That's why the strikes went on so long because they were, they used it as an opportunity to cancel shows. Like they knew they were going to cancel stuff anyway. So we're like, oh, pff, now we can just blame the strikes and we don't have to look so bad. Mm -mm. You know, that's what we're going to yeah, do. Yeah, because basically we're going to cancel things don't perform, which usually are agenda driven bullshit. And we're going to, you know, they, and so they can't cancel us on the Internet. It's because the strikes. Yeah, they said the lengthy work stoppage also gave the studios ample time to cull their slates and apparently decide there were plenty of deals and titles they could live without. I mean, look at what they're doing. There are a lot of these streaming shows. They greenlit them. They took them off the platform. They purged them completely. You can't find them anywhere. Now, a lot of car, especially Warner Brothers, so many cartoon shows, uh, Raised by Wolves. I was going to say Raised by Wolves because Squid King's really mad about it. Squid King's mad that they, not one, are not going to finish the series because that's one of his, he loves hard science fiction. And that's one of the, that's one of his favorite shows. And uh, they're not going to finish it. And uh, he had to go buy Blu-ray and you can't buy it on Blu-ray, I guess, anymore. Because they're just like pretending it doesn't exist. He said, no, you can catch reruns every once in a while on like their streaming science fiction thing. But but yeah, that's what they're doing. Uh, multiple reports have indicated many writers overall deals will not be extended to compensate for the strike. Projects paused by the shutdown are being scrapped and that new TV deals and orders have been scarce. The new cost consciousness professed by studio executives on earning calls is taking hold and will reshape the Hollywood landscape in the months and years ahead. Oh my God. Hashtag clownfish was right. Mm -hmm. uh, put some money in the jar. We said you might get what you want because they were asking for the moon. I, I think in some cases with it, especially the WGA and the writer's room and all that stuff. Um, and you might get what you want, but there are going to be so far fewer shows that, the studio is going to be like, fine, we'll pay all of you more, but we're only going to do two shows instead of 12 shows. And you what can... happens is when you don't have so many shows, it's like back in the old days, everybody watched the same stuff. So everybody's yes. going to look for something to watch. They're still going to watch it. It's not going to be so spread out. So those shows might actually perform better. So people on those shows might get better residuals because everybody's watching the same shows. Yeah. And they're okay. So this is really th this whole thing. This just supports everything we've been saying. Um, uh, this means less content flowing through the pipeline. The days of 600 scripted shows a year aren't coming back anytime soon. And the theatrical business already shrunk by COVID will likely remain diminished. Therefore, fewer jobs to go around the industry. Many writers and actors will likely not benefit from the changes they struck to secure as the industry mm -hmm. undergoes substantial shrinkage. Oh, what have we heard that before? It's like a swimming pool, the very chilly swimming pool. 
Even those who continue to find employment may find a limited financial upside to the reforms won by the strikes. The new performance-based streaming residual bonus for the WGA creates a narrow window for success, requiring a title to achieve the equivalent of viewership by 20% of an uh, SVOD platform's domestic subscriber base. So you have to basically, you have to have a Stranger Things or something of that level to even crack their residual bonus. But if they have fewer shows, people, so people, there's less to, people, for, to choose from. People are going to watch what they're given. They might actually be able to do that more often, but it's going to be fewer. Yeah, they said that um, this guy, entertainment strategy guy, I, I don't know who this is, uh, found that only 14% of first season streaming shows released between 2021 and 2023 would even qualify for a bonus. Only 14%. Well, yeah, because because you have to understand the studio's point of view, not that I'm defending the studios. It's like if they gave all these residual bonuses for everything, even if they didn't perform, you know, they couldn't afford to do that. They had to shut down. So you, you give, you you reward performance, which is yeah. what you should do. Yeah. So, um, and they bring up Zazlab. They're like, he even admits, he even admits a right about everything. No, he, it was a backhand slap. He's like, yeah, we overpay for you bitches. But, you know, yeah, I no, guess No, he right. said, but I have no problem overpaying for quality. For quality. Listen to what, sometimes people tell you what they're actually thinking if you just listen. He's trying to be nice-ish. He's like, yeah, we overpay, but I'll overpay for quality. I will overpay if you give me another House of the Dragons or something. That's gonna... And in his mind, David Zaslav, it's not even about quality because apparently Coyote versus Zachme was very, very good and he was willing to chop it. It's about how much money is this going to make mm -hmm. me? So you give me another House of the Dragon and uh, I will overpay you for that because I'm going to make a lot more money than paying you off of this program. That's how he's thinking. This guy is very much a businessman. And this is how it used to be back in the day. But yeah, I'm, I'm with geeky on this one. I think if we have fewer programs, we might actually have a return of something resembling pop culture because we don't have like, you know, I was thinking about, you know, with Matthew Perry passing, like we don't have those kinds of programs anymore that everybody watched. We did up until like, I think community in the office and stuff like that. But now there aren't that many now. It's all fragmented. Yeah, it's, it's you know? super fragmented. So I think what's, that, and that's a really good way of putting it. It's all fragmented. It's split off into too many pieces. So if you have fewer pieces, then people are going to be having to watch those pieces. And those ones are going to bring more money and more views. Um, unless they go watch old stuff, which is also possible. Because if you keep giving them shit that's, you know, unwatchable and crap, they're just going to go watch the old stuff that they they know they like. So this, yeah, that's true. And that's what a lot of people are doing. Uh, apparently they had a whole thing that millennials were just going back to linear TV and just watching like mash reruns. And well, the reason friends is so popular now is that, uh, you know, people that weren't there for it the first time have been watching the reruns, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like I used to watch, you know, happy days and good times and all these other, you know, shows are before my time, but I used to watch the reruns. Scooby-Doo, the reason Scooby-Doo is so popular is the reruns. I mean, mm -hmm. it was popular its first run, but mostly what secured Scooby-Doo as being like a pop culture icon was so many stations ran Scooby-Doo reruns for years and years and years. And then they started making the fun movies. But yeah. Yeah. And so that that's that's why. So um, they said, look, uh, I, I guess they're like, yeah, it's still worth it because they made some, you know, some progress and da, 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 da. But they're like, yeah, but it's also going to be kind of hard because in the long run, in the long run, this is going to be this is going to be good for the WGA and SAG after. I think I don't, it's only a three year deal. In, in the long run, it's going to be good for those who are left in the positions to have jobs. It is a good deal for those who are, who are going to qualify. Yeah. Um, I guess we could touch on this here real quick before we wrap up, we we're going to do a video about it. And it's like, yeah, it's not oh, worth yeah, it. Oh yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't worth talking uh, about. Yeah. Fran Drescher's Robin hood fund where basically they got, they get some money, uh, from the streaming studios to dole out to their members, however they see fit, which I think is kind of dumb. But what's going on is we basically have way more people that want to be actors and way more people that want to be writers. Yeah, there's like a hundred, what they say, 130,000 members, but only a fraction of them, like 16%, actually qualify, make the $24,000. It's like 22,000 of them make the $24,000 a year or more to be considered for the insurance and to be considered like they're doing it as a job. And so they're getting instead of the levy that they're asking for, they instead are getting like 120 million over the course of three years. Yeah, that they can give it out as they see fit. And what happens is though the shows that they're getting the money from are the high performers. So instead of all the money going to the performers, it, some of it's going to sag. Yes. Um. Now they're they're reiterating they're not going to use it to build themselves a new office building or anything like that. But 
you know, people flat said, they said this is a very socialist mindset. Right, because like, they're going to give it to the ones who need it the most kind yeah, of thing. It's not going to be performance-based. Um, you know, and the, it's probably going to be wind up being like pity money. Like, okay, this person, you know, can't pay. The, I mean, which is fine in some cases, but my, I guess my, my way of looking at this is kind of like with comics too, where there's a huge uh, disparity between people that are making really good money, six figures plus in comics and people that are making like $12,000 a year. And the people that are making $12,000 a year shouldn't, I don't think they should have to take from like Todd McFarlane. Oh, Todd McFarlane made a couple million dollars this year. So we're going to take some of Todd McFarlane's money and give it to the people who are making $12,000 a year coloring some indie comic or boom. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not really fair. And that's kind of what's going on here. It's like, well, if they're not getting the roles and they're not really marketable as actors, then why is it the union's responsibility? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It really isn't. And, and all um, people are going to just join the union. The union gets dues and they don't do anything and then they just get something anyway. Yeah, that's, you that's know, stupid. I don't know. I mean. I, Give everybody a coupon book. Give everybody a coupon book. Here, here, get free McDonald's ice cream. I'm like, I can see it if like someone's really close. <laughs> yeah, if they're really close to making the cutoff and they need health insurance or something, I can see maybe helping them because they're close. Yeah, something they're like there. that. They're maybe. out there like yeah. oh, you have to work so many days or you have to be you know actively out there doing something. I think would make more sense. But I, it, yeah, it's basically the Robin Hood fund is how they're describing it in the in the Hollywood journalists are describing it that way as well. Yeah. So everything's gonna change, guys. And we we said this is like. Even the win is not really a win because it's got, it's going to be just like it was before. You're going to have a huge uh, difference between the people that are the top performers and the people that are just, you know, just working in the industry and, and paying their dues to the union and hoping they're going to get something better. But there are going to be fewer opportunities for people to cut their teeth, which is good in some ways because we had a lot of people, frankly, working on shows that shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, judging by the quality and judging by the attitudes on social media and they felt that they were entitled to work on these shows and now it's like now nah, it's gonna be merit-based so good good luck with that yep that's not socialism that is the opposite we're gonna wrap this up yep please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys we'll talk later bye